Ah, good evening, and welcome to Marketplace and Authority. I'm your founder, of course, your host tonight. I'm Dr. Ken Smith, and this week I have a special guest. She drove two hours to be with me. One of my favorite speakers, the amazing Apostle April, came all the way out to be with us. Thank you so much, Apostle, for coming. Uh, I want to talk about, I, I had her come out here. We've got, uh, we're going to do part one and two, 25 minutes, and the Apostle and I will take a short break, get a little drink of water, and we'll come back and finish. But I want to encourage you, and I want to start off with recognizing God's calling. Now, as you all know, on Marketplace and Authority, we always talk about business, uh, and, and I'll leave the business in here, but I brought the Apostle to give us tools. This is her gift, this is her calling, extremely gifted prophetically, and she's a theologian that can really give us those necessary tools to understand why we're called. Now, I, I want to say three things. I'll give you seven steps, but I want her, and I'll give a scripture, but I want her to go deep into what we're talking about. And right after this, at 8 o'clock, please mark your calendar, call everybody. If you want to come down and see us, it's 714-299-0526. Um, Make sure you call us and let us know that you're coming so we can make reservations for us because she's going to go off and teach on talking about miracles. She's going to do it out of Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel 36. Wait till you hear this. I heard a little bit of it. I just can't even believe she's got that there. But it will help all of us. And this is some of the problems we're struggling with. These are tools for life applications. This is why you watch Vision TV. It's like a Bible study, but it's applications yes. of testimonies of what real life that we're going through. Take us where we are, Apostle, and move us forward. That's what we're asking to do, and that's why she came tonight. So let's begin recognizing God's calling. So I want to start with the date. I thought it was very interesting. Today is the fifth month, which means grace. I believe tonight, and it's also Apostle's birthday yesterday, but we're still celebrating it today. So I believe today's fifth means grace, but the 24th is very interesting. It means priests. We are kings and priests. Of course, that's in Revelation 5.10. Now, in my point of view, uh, I'm not, I don't have this scripturally uh, yet, but it says, like, for example, I'm more king than priest. She might be more priest than king. We're both under our God. That's what the word says. But since I'm a business person, I might lean more towards the business. That's why it's called marketplace and authority. I'm talking about the marketplace, which we're in authority. She's more priest. She might talk about applications, tools to show the priesthood that we're in so we can encourage others. What's the difference? Real quick, and I'll stop. This is powerful. The king brings the tithes and offerings into the priests, or he takes over territory, or she, it's he or she. It's the same thing when I say he, she, it's the same thing. Also, it's very, very important that we understand that that we conquer territory for our God. We bring, um, we, we fight the battles. We're the ones that uh, tear up ground to bring the, uh, the influence in to the priest. And the priest is the one that takes care of the tithes and offerings. The priest prays for the widows and orphans. That's the true religion. He also takes care of the man or woman at the gate, the stranger at the gate, it's called. What is that, the unbelievers, to come in to be believers? So he's the one that keeps house, but more importantly, he or she, she in this case, will be praying for the king, the kingly anointing, to help them bring in the, not only the finances, but bring in the territories, bring in the people, and more importantly, bring in the influence that the priest prays over and encourages, but he's always interceding. So the two together is a perfect marriage. And we talked about, I had her last night, Again, drove a long way. We had a different venue. We went out to a church in Rosemead, uh, two hours from here. Very anointed there. And she just really opened our eyes on some of the tools to encourage you. And I want to give you, once I find out the address there of how to encourage you to see that program, you won't, won't want to miss it. So let's turn her loose tonight. I'll start with the first one and let's let her really go off tonight. So you, you don't want to miss this because you got her for two straight hours. You got her for this hour, 25, 25, and she's going to go for an hour. And if you feel that, we'll have this all live. You can do it from your house. If you want to have her lay hands on you, speak right into you, she'll talk about her destiny. She'll pray for the sick. She'll get prophetic words. Whatever God is leading her to do, whatever you're sensing God needs agreement with, the apostle definitely has the anointing to do it. I see her do it many, many, many times. 
And she's speaking, coming up, I'll give you the, all the addresses that she's speaking at so you can go see her live and support her. So first off, God does, does the calling. So I want you to see this. God determines the course of history from the beginning. So he's the one that chooses us. So Apostle, if you want to, I, I got Isaiah 41, 4, and I'm like, but you know, however you want to go off, it's what do you see the calling, uh, how, how do you interpret that to help us with some tools that can encourage us? Well, this is going to be very interesting because the subject that we're going to go off of tonight is Ezekiel. So Ooh. that's the topic on who, we, who we're going to be discussing. Ooh. So I'm just going to share his life as how God called him to his purpose. That's really good. So as we know, Ezekiel was one of God's prophets. He was someone that was actually caught up and was in prison in Babylon at the same time as Daniel. So that's very interesting. It is. So even though that they did not um, connect at that time, they were in the same area, but they were in different vicinities and they were that's called good. at different times. Now, at this particular time, Ezekiel had was not yet a prophet. He was a priest. But God called him into a place to where he was ready to commission him to do his purpose. So in saying that, we have to start with what does Ezekiel even mean? Because back in these days, we know that names always was established to their purpose and their destiny. The same as how we are, some of us are today. And so it's very interesting because mine is attached to my destiny, which I have found out very interesting. So Ezekiel, his name means strengthening. So mm -hmm. God used him as a man of strength to be able to release his purpose as a prophet, to be able to determine and to, and to release judgment and love and mercy out of behalf of God's voice. He started off with a vision. God gave him a vision to be able to show him, this is what the realm consists of. This is what my love look like. This is who I am. This is what is coming. And so in saying that, he, it, he said that within like one and three of the chapter. However, he goes on to commission him. And this is where my destiny and, and Ezekiel destiny collides. Mm. Because this is where God called me nine or actually now 11 years ago. Wow. Where Ezekiel um, was called as commission. God told him to eat the scroll, it was, which represents a book. And he That's told good. him, as you eat this, you are going to speak my word. So as he ate the scroll, he told him, Ezekiel's response was, is, it was sweet as honey, however, it made him bitter. So he, he understood the love of God, and he understood the judgment of God. And he was able to get all that in the lamentation of the word. So in saying that, that same paraphrasing, God called me in a vision. It was in a dream at night. And he told me, he gave me something, he um, handed it to me, and told me to eat it and to step into the water, and I will understand. Now, I didn't understand at that time because I, did, I was not a Berean. I did not understand the Bible, let alone prayer. So it took me like a year or two to really understand what all this meant. So to make a long story short, Ezekiel was called with a commission to be able to speak God's word to the people of Israel to try to free them from what they have called um, as operating in idolatry. So this is something that God will call you to, which if he probably haven't already done that, we have to be sensitive to what God is saying to us today. We have dreams. We have visions. The Bible says that he comes to us in visions and dreams. He actually comes to us through other prophets or at the time they were called seers. And so God will bring that confirmation to you in your life to help you determine what your purpose is. But you have to first seek him. He's not going to always give you a purpose if you think you're going to run rapid with it. You have to be able to speak the word of God and be able to know what direction you are going in. Because as for me, when I received that revelation, I didn't immediately um, prompt on it. I was just like, okay, this is what it is. But however, I was a reader and I had started digesting the word of God. And in doing that, I was a person that studied. I had to know why did this happen? Well, who was they related to? Well, when did this happen? And what did this have to do with my life? And that's how I actually started studying. And that's how I came to who I am to be today. But as for yourself, God might be calling you as a teacher. He might be calling you as an evangelist. He might be calling you as a preacher. He might be, might be calling you just as a person to love people. He might be calling you just to serve. It is many things within the body of Christ which we are all called to do. Mm -hmm. And whatever you most likely sometimes love to do is not going to always be what the calling is. That's just your physical nature of how God called it. What we have to remember is the body of Christ is represented in a kingship. It is royal and heavenly. It's about kingship, royalty, and realm. And we have to know how to operate in the realm being that we already know that we are kings and queens in the spirit. So we have to know when God is speaking to us. So I encourage you. Read the Word of God. Your life might just be designed and already um, structured in the Word of God to help you be able to know what you need to do. As I read Ezekiel, I find that my life is more structured, even though it's not the easiest thing in the world to understand or do, but at the same time, I still have an idea of what God calling me to do. Powerful. So you see right there the tools that she gives us. 
you can see from her life she gave it an illustration she gave a testimony so that that's the prophecy of jesus is testimonies to encourage us what we should do as called as believers so let me give you the second one because i i want to get two or three and then we'll come back and finish it so the second one is to hear god's voice as the apostle said so i want to encourage you they will be deeper in insight, confident in their call, mm -hmm. and unlimited greatness for the power for us, uh, is in us. So, in the easy to read, it says, God has promised his holy people are rich. That's, we could go a lot of ways with that. Usually wealth is health, uh, relationships, money too. But rich is usually finances. Yes. So, and glorious. So we, his glory is upon us. That's the point. Don't forget to call us if you need directions. 714-299-5026. Call us now. If, you, uh, if the lines are busy, make sure you call back. Or stay tuned because you don't want to miss in the next hour when the apostle is praying for all of us. And of course, verse 19 says, We'll know God's power for it's great for us who believe. And also, this is my favorite part. He raised Christ from the dead and put the right side of heaven. So I thought that was powerful. It's the same power, in other words, that he raised Christ from the dead. That's in us. So it will be obedient. Know the word. We know the authority. We know the word that's in us. We know the power that God has given us. We, too, can encourage, pray for the sick, and they'll be healed. We, too, can speak words of wisdom, words of knowledge. We can speak destiny into others. We can open the eyes of the blind. Blind might not be physically, but spiritually. And that's what I fear today. We're all walking around because we're stuck in our iPad, right. our phone. We're not paying attention to what God has for us. Technology is wonderful if it's a tool. And we're going to turn the apostle loose with that. Don't you feel this is the second key of the seven. The voice of God is a very important part to find our calling. Absolutely, absolutely. I was looking for the scripture as you were talking. Um, in the book of Isaiah 11, the Bible talks about how he will give you the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, understanding, divine might, and a reverential fear of him. So you will be able to walk in these things of God. It's the spirit of God. This particular scripture that I just read is the character of the Holy Spirit. Now, we know that once we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we automatically receive that gift of the Holy Spirit. Because as Jesus told the disciples, he said, I cannot send you the Holy Spirit. I can't send you this gift until I go into heaven, until I ascend. So when he did that in Acts 1.8, he said that the, the power of the Holy Spirit was going to come upon them. And that on them means us too, because the Bible also says that in the last days that we were going to prophesy, that we were going to dream dreams, that we were going to have visions and things of that nature. So we are not exempt. You are not exempt. So God is speaking to you the same way that he spoke to the people in the old as well as the new. You are just a new generation. And a lot of people say, you know what, I would like to experience, or sometimes I think I wanted to be there when Christ was when Christ walked the earth, but actually the people of God, I just want to let you know today we are living the life of the fullness of his glory because we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy mm, Spirit was not true. where um, was it was not in the people at that time where Christ walked. The only two people that the Holy Spirit resonated in and stayed at that moment was John the Baptist, which was Jesus' cousin, and Jesus himself. But we want we have the Holy Spirit continuously, daily, all the time. And he said that he will talk to you, he mm. will teach you, and he will show you all that you need to know. Jeremiah 3 3 says, he said, call on him and he will answer you and show you great and mighty things, things you have never seen, things that is sacred, but you have to have a relationship with God. You will know when God is speaking to you because he said, my sheep knows my voice. Now, if you are in a place where you are seeking God, because we have all been there, I've been there, and I know that when I was studying and I was praying, I was seeking God's voice, it don't always come audibly, and that's what we need to understand tonight. There's Ooh, many ways good. of which God yeah. speaks. And the Bible actually says also in Ezekiel that he said, I will fill you with my word in your heart. He said, open up your ear so that you may hear. That's now, when he good. said, open up your ear, ear that you may hear, it wasn't of a physical aspect of the ear. That's because good. if you remember, if you go back to Ezekiel 37, I told you I was going to be talking about Ezekiel a lot. If you go back to Ezekiel 37, he told Ezekiel prophesied to these dry bones that they will hear. And see, if they are dry bones, that means that he was talking about something spiritual because they didn't yet have flesh. He was about to prophesy that on them. So what am I saying? That you have to know when God is speaking to you, it will come on an impression. It will come in a vision. 
it will come just a thought. Oh my goodness. It will come in a way in the way you would just least expect it. That's why you got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You have to operate in the things of God by taking on the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. What is that? Love, joy, peace, meekness, and so forth. These are instructions that help guide you into the place where God will speak to you more easily. Why? Because he trusts you. He trusts you with his word. He trusts you with his will. He trusts you with his decisions. And everything that you speak, he will be able to have um, demand on it. And you will have power and authority on it to where the Holy Spirit will automatically respond to it because you're speaking the legal word of God and the enemy cannot do anything but uh, submit to it. And everything that you speak from here on out, it will prevail because you are speaking the true righteousness and the word of God. Hallelujah. Good word. Interesting. She brings up the nine fruits of the spirit. I thought that was powerful. That's Galatians 5. Yes. And it, it, one of them is self-control. Mm -hmm. that's, oh, that's huge. That's so I want to say this. If you can, it's like the cake and the icing on it. It's the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's mm -hmm. the power gifts that the apostle was talking about. It talks about the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the, yes. uh, the gift of faith, the gift of miracles, the gift of um, healing. Yes. Um, it talks about the interpretations of come. It talks about tongues. I mean, all nine, uh, I don't have them in front of me, but there is nine of them. We can come to gifts. Why? When we get the nine fruits, just like she said, yes. the nine gifts are the fruits of the Spirit, mm -hmm. which is in Galatians 5. Look at those. It's joy, meekness, uh, faithfulness, gentleness, kindness, self-control. You yes. can see it for yourself. Here's, here's my point. We master that. Mm -hmm. Now we have legal right to covet 1 Corinthians 14 while we can govern the gifts. Yeah. Now we can move into those power gifts that everybody wants to do. But it's just like not like a shotgun. Mm -hmm. It has to be laser focused, right. a single shot to what we're looking to do to help that person. Three things that have to happen. We'll, we'll talk about this. Hopefully we can get this out on the next session, but I want to talk about how do we receive a miracle. It's our, one is our attitude, if we're walking with Christ, and third is His will. How do we know it's His will? The apostle hit on it. We have to know the Word. So, the third one is read the Bible, and she was just talking about that, and I thought it was interesting, I just want to say this. Jesus said in verse, it's uh, Matthew twenty-two, twenty-nine, and I'll read it easy to read. This is for us old folks, the children, the younger version. <laughs> Don't know, uh, Jesus says, you are so wrong, you don't know the scriptures, say. You don't know anything about God's power. Boy, isn't that true. If we don't get in this word, like she's saying, look at the t uh, tools she's given us. She's showing us the keys to the kingdom. It's binding. It was actually, it's in Matthew 16, 19. But besides that, she's showing you the tools, how you can, first of all, prayer. You get into his presence. Now we can really talk to him. He guarantees that we'll hear him. But if we're not saying anything that he wants to hear, in other words, if we're not repeating his word back, and we're not asking him, what is your will? Instead of always asking right. why, how about how? How can I glorify you? How can I do, be obedient to what you would have for me? How can I understand the calling you have for me? How can I be a gift to your body? Those are the words we do not why this happens like that. We'll suffer through trials where with the fallen world, it's... It's un uh, Jesus suffered and learned. Hebrews 8, 5. Or 5, 8. I'm sorry, but let's move on. Uh, the fourth one is seeking the Holy Spirit. And of course, that's uh, Romans 8, 13. It says, And the power of the Spirit put to death the deeds of the sinful nature. Oh, so we have to have the Holy Spirit. Not only in us, uh, Acts 2, 2. Yes. We call, Come Holy Spirit. I encourage you to do that in prayer. Mm -hmm. Come, let Him rest in you. But also in Luke 3, 22, where Jesus had the Holy Spirit ascend on him. It was a form of a dove. It wasn't real dove, but it looked like a dove. Here's my point. If we ask him to rest on us, it's in Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And that's when he talked about to, uh, to preach the brokenhearted, to heal the sick, to uh, bring sight to the blind. Uh, it's very important. All that's in there covers what God is going to do for you. So apostle to you. I, I think it's so interesting in John 4, 48, it says, Jesus said to them, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. And I think it's important tonight, you will see it. If you will tune in between 8 and 10, the apostle's going to give a short teaching, and she's going to pray for any request. If you call in, if you're here live at our studio, we'll have a, a good-sized audience. You'll get to see her live praying for others. So, apostle to you, it's very important that we seek the Holy Spirit. Do you have any tips for us or any tools how we could do that? Yes, you just have to be quiet. 
-hmm. That's it. He's already present within us. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit has come upon us. He had, we had re received him in power by believing. What we have to understand is we have already been justified and sanctified. Now, we, what we have to understand is justification is not the same as sanctification. The Bible says in Romans 5 that we have been justified by faith to have peace in God through Jesus Christ. Now, that right there plays a big part because by us being justified, meaning that we are already made right with, with God in, through, mm -hmm. in his eyes through Christ Jesus. Now, faith plays a big part in receiving the Holy Spirit. That's why I'm going to justification because as well as sanctification, you have to be able to stay in practice. You have to be able to stay in a way to where you will be able to know the word, know the voice, know the movement and the, and the, um, the how do you say, the experience of the Holy Spirit. When he comes, you will know because you are taking that time to read your word and then meditate on that word. When you meditate on the word, then that means that you have to repeatedly say something over and over and over and over again. That is meditating. When you meditate on that word, then now it becomes part of your life. It becomes part of your heart. And when you are seeking the Holy Spirit, he's able to bring those particular things back into your life and your understanding to where you are able to utilize them. And when you do that, the Bible says, I believe in Joshua, he said, God said, I watch over my word to perform it. So prayer is very significant, it's very um, strategic, and it's very critical for a Christian's life. Because if you don't have prayer, then we are powerless. Mm. If you don't have the word of God, then your word, your, your prayer is oh, empty. Oh my goodness. If you don't have the word of God and if you don't have prayer, then the Holy Spirit has no movement. Mm. The Bible says the Holy Spirit hovered the waters in the beginning, and then God spoke. So see, the Holy Spirit has to be moving in your life in order for the word to manifest itself around you and what you are going to speak out of your mouth. So you have to know who God is and what his will consists of. And that way, you will know that the righteous shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And when you speak the word of God, the just will always manifest. The just will always be victorious because he said many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. Not just because you're his child, but because you have a relationship. And that relationship keeps you in connection with the Holy Spirit, which was, is a promise to you through the inheritance of God. Powerful word, powerful. This like you might want to write that down. She was right. It's Jeremiah 1 12. He looks to perform, there we go. perform his word. And in fact, he's so obsessed with his word, and mm -hmm. as we all should be, that he has angels hearken at the word. Yes. So and where is that? Hebrews uh, 1 14. The angels hearken at the word of the Lord. So I, I want to give you a thought if I can find it. It's in uh, uh, Psalms 114 15. And I'll read it to you real quick. And this is a promise from the Lord. This is powerful. And this will encourage you. Or, one, or 115, I'm sorry. It's 115. If I, uh, and then I'm, I'll close with this and we'll come back in a few minutes. But 115 talks about, uh, I think it's 115, 14, that's it. So uh, it talks about, if I can find it. I was going to do it by memory, but I want to make sure. The, may the Lord give you more yes. and more and even your children. So in other words, depending on, I'm looking for the easy to read, but if you look at other ones, it talks about he'll give you more and your children's children more. Mm -hmm. So he promises to perform his word then we as believers, if we believe, remember the faith, we have a measure of faith, it's a gift, God gives each one of us a measure, what does that mean, I don't know. But we all have a measure, we can develop it, we can't grow it. But faith, we can, or belief, we can. Why? It's, it's a study, it's not so much study, but it's account facts is what belief really works out to be. They're on the same so, uh, side of the road, but they have different meanings. If you'll put the two together, Jesus always talked about faith, and he talked about belief or unbelief, or just the belief. So that's where it is. We'll study the word and get the word in us. So we, how do we know if Jesus lived, or how do you know he resurrected? Look where it says. Where does we, where do we get our information from the Bible? That's each word is inspired by. by I got one minute left. I'm telling you, that's where you put your belief and faith in. That's what moves mountains. Yes. If you'll give us five minutes, we'll come right back to close until five minutes from now. I'm Dr. Ken, of course, the Apostle April. We'll be right back 
marketplace and authority. thank you so much for watching. stay tuned. we'll be right back.